Hi, everyone. Uh, so great to see a full house tonight, so thank you for coming. My name is Mary Magsman. I'm the programs manager here at the Manil, and um, this is our first public program of uh, the new year. Um, so happy new year to you all, happy 2024, and thanks for being here. Um, tonight's program is in conjunction with the Hannah Darboven exhibition, um, so hopefully you've had a chance to see it, but if you haven't, it is up until February 11th. And there's also a beautiful book that accompanies it that is being sold at the bookstore. Um, so please check it out. Um, and um, the exhibition was curated by Kelly Montana. And she's going to say a few words um, after, before the third piece that's playing tonight, the, the piece by Hannah Darboven. So she'll come up and talk a little bit about that then. Um, and I want to give a special thank you to the members of Loop 38 for their work on this this. Uh, project tonight, and especially to Caitlin, Chelsea, Jamie, and Craig. Uh, upcoming next Thursday, January 18th, we're going to be having an artist talk with Nari Ward, and his work is currently on view in the Long and Grief and Spirituality Art Since 1980 exhibition that's in the main building. Um, so just a reminder to silence your cell phones, please. And um, we'll start the program. At the end of the program, we'll do a couple, Q, couple of questions, Q&A afterwards, if you have um, questions you want to ask. And then that'll wrap it up. So thank you.
right. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, this is Loop 38, or at least four of our core members. My name is Craig Hauschultz. Uh, I'm a percussionist with the group, and it is such a joy to have you all here tonight. Uh, as Mary mentioned before, the, the, the concert is, is curated in connection with, with uh, Hannah Darboven's exhibition, which is here. It'll be open for a few more weeks. I hope that if you haven't seen it already, uh, that you'll be able to come back and, and check it out. Uh, and tonight's uh, concert is framed around the idea of mathemat the connection between mathematics and music. Uh, the first piece on the program was by Andy Akiho, and the, the pattern that I played there on the desk bells is, is, a, is, a, is a pattern in 31 small little notes cycled over and over and over again while everybody else plays different groupings above it. And it, it, it rotates kind of like a kaleidoscope and you never actually hear the same thing twice, but it's constantly changing. So it feels both familiar and kind of like magically floating. I hope you enjoyed it. I love playing it. I feel like it, it's bubbly and energetic and fun. Um, all of the pieces on the program are going to have some connection to, to mathematics. That one was how does 31 fit into, 31 little pieces fit into 31 big pieces and how does it like fold over itself. This next piece by Ligeti uh, is, is a little different. And I wanted to take a moment and, and build some empathy here before we play it. <laughs> Because if I make a mistake, <laughs> I want you to understand at least why I made it. So, um, little audience participation, if you guys are okay with this. I'd like to start simple. This side of the room, I'd like you to count over and over to three. I'm gonna have you clap on one, okay? This side of the room, we're also gonna count over and over to three and we're gonna clap on one. I said we're gonna keep it simple, all right, ready? All right, so if I go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Everybody, I want you to say one, two, three, one, two, three with me and clap on one. So, ready? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Feels like we've gone to Vienna. I love it. Perfect. All right, now a step harder. You guys are going to hold the four down on the threes, okay? We're going to go to fours. And they're going to clap every three, we're going to clap every four. And for those math people in the room, you can do your multiplication tables and you can figure out that you're going to do four groups of three, you're going to do three groups of four, and then suddenly it'll all come together again. Cool? Let's try this. I'll stay with the fours because the threes is a bigger number of people. Here we go. So this, I'll start the threes out. One, two, three, 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 one, two. So if you can do that, I want you guys to stay. Oh no, you guys should do fours. Let's, let's do you fours and you guys do fives. Yeah. My favorite, somebody really likes the fives. This makes me happy. All right, and then I promise I'll, we'll play more music again. <laughs> Ready? So I'll start with the fours. Ready? That was excellent. Now we're gonna do it where we go. One, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Shall we? Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. 
So the premise of the next piece is that Jamie and I are going to do that in an endless stream of changing for five and a half minutes. Sometimes he'll be four, sometimes I'll be three, sometimes we'll both be three, then he'll do five, then I'll do six, and then we just keep changing and folding over top of each other until we come out at the end. And if I screw it up, now you know how hard it is and it will be fine. <laughs> So I'll do my best not to do that. Jamie will do his best not to do that. And without further ado, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening.
Hello, good evening everyone. Hello everyone. Oh, I haven't looked up to see all of you in the back. <laughs> Thank you for being here everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Montana. I'm the assistant curator for the Manil Drawing Institute and the curator of the exhibition Hannah Darboven Writing Time that occasions this magnificent program that we have this evening. Hannah Darboven, well, I'll tell you a little bit what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about who Darboven was, and then a little bit about her relationship to drawing and her relationship to music, and part of why we wanted to put together this um, program tonight, and I'm so grateful that we did. Hannah Darboven was broadly known amongst conceptual art enthusiasts in Europe and the United States. She kind of came of age as an artist in the late 1960s. In Darboven's art, line, drawing, text, mathematical formulas, and yes, musical scores, overlap and slip into one another. These features are united by her minimal, idiosyncratic, and serialized approach to mark making, which for her fueled her efforts to capture her subjective perception of time. 
And so for those of you that have gone through the show or those of you that are soon going to go through the show, what you'll see is this slow unraveling of time. And I think we all have a sense of what that feels like. We know that an hour can feel like a century. We know a year can feel like a minute. We know that our lives can feel minuscule next to the sweep of history. And that's what she's capturing. And it was the look and logic of mathematical principles that drove her thinking and her aesthetic. So you'll see random number patterns, the labor of counting, the labor of counting, <laughs> and the elegant balance of an equation are all replete in her practice. Uh, the exhibition actually opens with some of Darboven's earliest work, some of that she made when she was in art school. And in fact, she wasn't always destined to be an artist. She trained as a pianist herself. And she thought for a long time that that was going to be her pursuit, where she would go in life. But music always continued to hold a special place for her. And you can see in the first gallery, in fact, some of these abstract drawings have notations on them where she's notating areas that she sees as having um, areas of activity or areas of noise and areas of unactivity or silence. And these are pure abstractions that she's notating this way. So for me, it was terrifically exciting to see this young artist that was already kind of looking at her work as early as 1966 as having some kind of relationship to a sonic environment. And that's because it wasn't until 1980 that she began to turn her drawings into musical scores. She began to make drawings that she would turn into scores that could be played. Um, so she would turn these number systems into, um, she would provide them to composers that would arrange them into music for various instruments. And of her entire practice across her art, um, she really, you can really see the way she saw it through the lens of music. I have this quote here from Darboven. My systems are numeric concepts that work according to the laws of progression and or reduction in the manner of a musical theme with variations. So I hope tonight's program will help you kind of illuminate that aspect of her, of her work in the exhibition. Um, music was an incredible inspiration to her in so many ways. She was a proud collector of antique musical instruments, dozens of them, and she routinely hired local folk musicians to play parties large and small in her home. So I'm just particularly thrilled that Loop 38 decided to partner with us on this to really highlight this important component of her art, but also really further Darboven's kind of standing amongst really, really great minimalist compositions and mathematically generated music. Um, I remember when we first, when Craig and I first started talking about putting this program together, we had a conversation with the Darboven estate, which is in Hamburg, Germany, and they were really excited we were doing this program, and the, what, the work we just witnessed reminded me that our first conversation, they told us, well, the music's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, but it's the counting that's really challenging. <laughs> And I just got a sense of what, I hadn't really wrapped my mind around that until that exercise we just did. And I'll admit, I cheat. I was sitting next to the pianist, so I cheated a little bit. <laughs> so, um, but it's given me really new appreciation for the works and really the labor that Darboven put into them. And so with that, please enjoy this next piece that was composed by Hannah Darboven.
right. So before the last piece of the program, I want to just kind of reorient you a little bit because while all the pieces are rooted in math, um, they all kind of approach it very differently. Um, the pieces you've heard so far were all relatively short, very different characters, I think you would agree. This next piece is going to be 35 minutes long. And uh, we're going to change the time scale a little bit. When, uh, when Kelly here mentioned, uh, you know, Hannah's art trying to transcend time, I think this piece will hopefully start to take us there a little bit. The piece is written for, for piano, percussion, glockenspiel, and vibraphone, and electronics. So the electronics, we have uh, surround sound speakers here in the hall, and you're going to hear this kind of ebb and flow of these these lush chords. Uh, John Luther Adams uh, talks about this piece being one where kind of he gets in touch with his younger rocker self. So the 4,000 uh, Holes title is a reference to a Beatles lyric. And in this piece, there are gonna be these sweeping tonal chords. You get C major, F major, E minor. And sometimes, because of the way that he's playing with integers and the math, which you don't need to know, you know, the underpinnings necessarily to enjoy it, but as he does this, these chords kind of layer on top of each other and kind of just swoop and, and, and swoop around the room. And I, I hope it gives everyone a chance to just kind of relax, find your peace with whatever it is you need to find peace with. Um, I need to find peace with whatever that those sound was. Um, and I hope that you can find a place to just really experience this piece however you like, because the math, while it's underpinning all this and we're all, I mean, you'll hear that there'll be rising scales that kind of come out maybe at different times, but I hope that all the math is so like deep that it's kind of blurred and it just lets you experience the piece however it is that you like it. So without further ado, 4,000 holes.
Thank you, thank you. Loop 38, give him another round of applause. So I think we can entertain one or two questions. Um, and, um, can I ask a small favor? Oh, yeah. Before anybody leaves, before anybody leaves, can we get a photo of you all? I would love to get a photo from this direction because this is like a really exciting room. So, Siggy, why don't we go this way, Siggy? Okay, so you, you asked what was the word I used about the technical issue we had at the start, right? So um, that last piece had a click track with us. So in the computer, um, I had set up um, a kind of an intricate click track. Chelsea was listening to um, four seconds divided by eight even clicks. I was listening to four seconds divided by six or seven at different times. And Jamie was listening to all kinds of different things, but five, eight seconds divided by five clicks. So we were all like following different pulses, but every four seconds it would align. So there would be like chaos and then a coming together and then chaos and a coming together. And it's actually not chaos because it's math, right? Like divided by five, divided by six, divided by seven. It shouldn't be chaos actually. It should be really mathematically beautiful. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? Right there. You know, I like it. So your, the question was about the, where did the name Loop 38 come from? I'm curious, do you want to share your story? I think it's because the 610 Loop is 38 miles. Well done, yes. Fantastic. So what she said, uh, our dear friend Brandon Bell, for those of you who know Brandon Bell, who's a percussionist, uh, he actually was the one who named the group when he was in it, um, after the 610 loop, which is 38 miles long. So our name and our essence is tied to this great city. So any other questions? Yes. So the question was, in the, the second piece, the piece by Greg Ligeti, was there any improvisation involved? There should not have been any improvisation involved. And I don't know if anyone noticed, but my left hand got really shaky at the beginning of that. And Jamie spotted me at least once to make sure that the, the improvisation that was involved was very minimal. The piece, as, of no, as a note though, the piece was originally written for harpsichord, which blows my mind. So one person played both parts. And it's kind of like, That's it blows my mind. Definitely worth watching on YouTube. There's a lot of recordings of it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so he, what he said, just so that it's in the mic, was that if, if you check that out on YouTube, there's some great marimba recordings, but the original, the, the harpsichord is, is, is stunning. It's a, it's a feat of amazing proportion for human, for, for humans. Yes. <laughs> Excellent question, Lois. Um, the question was, did the, working on this concert change our perception of time, math, or there was a third thing that I missed? Anything. Anything. 
I would love to see what the others, I, I, I wanted to find a place, I, I did not introduce everybody. Can I take a second and then I'm gonna pull back here. This is the, the great Chelsea de Souza. <laughs> Chelsea's played with Loop several times, but this is her first concert as a core member, so we're excited to have her on the team. There'll be more concerts with her. This is Caitlin Mertens. And the great J.B. Kolar. Does anybody want to take a crack at Lois's question about did this change your sense of time? And you do have to speak into the mic. I think the biggest thing for me, and not so much changing perspective on it, but it's more how many different ways there are to present mathematical ideas in music. Because all four of those pieces, and they're not presenting the same ideas, but they're definitely still involved in kind of the same world of using numbers and using math to create the compositions, but all four of them have such different sounds and different worlds and different textures. So I think for me is more like how that sounds like it would be a very precise sounding thing, but it actually can be any type of music or any kind of genre of music. Do either of you want to take a crack at it? Um, well, with this last piece in particular, it's I don't often get to play a piece that's over 30 minutes long. Uh, and, you know, there's so much detail and nuance in how the fifths and sevenths and more are all stacked together, even in just my part. Like I was playing seven against four against five and all sorts of things going on at the same time. So as the performer, to be focused in on that nuanced detail while also experiencing the piece the way you did as this 30 minute long experience of large swells and dips, that was something really special that I got to do. So I'm grateful that we programmed this piece And uh, briefly, I guess about the, the harp solo, um, what I found working through it was maybe that like the patterns become really important and, and how the patterns change gradually over time and how when patterns change in certain ways, it, it kind of extends or it, it changes how time feels. And, and depending on the, the section of the piece or the piece on the program, time can feel very different. Like, like we said in the beginning, five minutes can feel like 30 minutes and, and that, I mean, the 30 minutes felt like, oh, it's, oh, that was already over, you know? Like it, it can, the, the way the patterns evolve, I think really can shape time. And then I guess I'll close out by saying, um, uh, many of you I'm sure have, have had loved ones and family members at the hospital. Like this has been a really rough holiday season for me. I've spent some time, you know, with somebody listening to all the monitors beep at 88 versus 66 and 112, the alarm goes off and this goes tick and that goes that. And I did find myself thinking about some of these pieces when all those bells and whistles were going off and how, you know, even though like in our day-to-day -day lives, we like, we, we live our lives kind of on our clocks and things, but there's all these little things going on in this room. Everybody's got their heartbeat. Everybody's got this, that, the other. The electricity is pulsing at 120 pulses per second, and this is going on. And like in our music history classes uh, at college, like one of the first chapters in our, our famous you know history book is about musica celestis, the dancing of the stars in these perfect mathematical, you know, things. And I think. Um, you know, when I first came across that idea, I was like, oh yeah, that's silly. Music is about melody and harmony. Get, like, get me back to Tchaikovsky and Mahler. <laughs> but like, um, I think the more that I kind of sank into the art aesthetic of the Menil collection, really, like the John Cage, the, the, the Rauschenbergs, and like trying to open my mind to more things. Because I, you know, I grew up in Iowa in the cornfields, and you know, I, I didn't have this exposure growing up. And the more I get into this music and I just, like accept it as sound and let it come to me however it does in these mathematical beauty, beauteous moments, it makes me happy. And I like happy, <laughs> so. That's a perfect way to end. <laughs> so thank you all again for coming tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening and we look forward to seeing you at upcoming Manil programs. Oh, can I say one other yeah.
We are all trying to grow the Loop family, and I love that you're here. If we don't have your name and email address, please, uh, there's a board, please let us, let us email you to tell us what our next concerts are. So thank you for being here. Have a wonderful night.